Welcome everyone to today's episode of the Lindsay Elmore Show. We all hear about tapping into our bodies and settling into our bodies. And in today's discussion, I talk with Kimberly Johnson about how we can fully reconnect with our animal selves. In today's conversation, I learn how important it is to fully be aware and cognizant of our mammalian needs, not just the needs that we have for fulfillment on a broader level, but let's get back down to basics. How can we feel safe, protected, well-fed, interconnected with a community and a group around us so that we reduce our fear responses and understand that we are safe and protected. We discuss in today's interview how the nervous system responds to difficult events and how we can become more physically grounded to reduce our frayed nerves and tap in to our innate wisdom within our senses. Let's get to the show. Welcome to the Lindsay Elmore Show, a podcast for people who deserve to be healthy with honest, open and enlightening conversations with doctors, thought leaders, creatives, and spiritual gurus, you'll walk away with simple and tangible tips and tricks that allow you to live your healthiest life so you can pursue your dreams, overcome obstacles, and leave your mark. Kimberly Johnson is a sexological body worker, somatic experiencing practitioner, yoga teacher, and postpartum advocate, as well as a single mom. Working hands-on in integrative women's health and trauma recovery for more than a decade, she helps women heal from birth injuries, gynecological surgeries, and sexual boundary violations. Kimberly is the author of the new book, Call of the Wild, How We Heal Trauma, Awaken Our Own Power, and Use It for Good. She is also the author of the mothering classic, The Fourth Trimester, and is the host of the Sex, Birth, and Trauma podcast. Kimberly Johnson, welcome to the Lindsay Elmore Show. Thank you. So there are a lot, a lot of books out there about trauma. And I was reading through your book. And one of the things that I loved so much are, these are your words, you wrote them. My goal is to teach you how to feel comfortable in your own skin and feel at home in yourself to notice your body's cues and meet your mammalian needs to be responsive to the present moment. That I think is such a beautiful summation of what it means to have awareness of the current moment, the current state of your body, of your emotions, of your surroundings. And yet we do the opposite of everything that you just said all of the time. We feel out of place. We satisfy our emotional needs before our mammalian needs. And we spend our mind's energy worried about the future and thinking about the past. How do we begin to make this huge shift and how did you as you were writing your book call of the wild come to understand that it's about a meeting of the most basic needs instead of the spinning out of control that we are doing day in and day out these mammalian needs are inherent to us. So we don't have to go out and find them. 
Um, they're living inside of us. And it can be a big task to learn how to be an accurate translator of our body's signals because we get so much reinforcement for overriding them, for being more productive, faster, less emotional, less tired, or even forget tired, like just less having a need to rest or having a need to connect. So first we have to define it for ourselves and in a way make a decision that our body has worthwhile information and that we're not gonna wait until it's screaming at us with symptoms and autoimmune problems and disorders and things we label as mental health problems so that we can really start to get into sync with what our body is asking us for because it's actually our body that is our compass that is holding so much of our past, as you said, and that's asking to be resolved. So we're having repetitive experiences so that we can resolve them and there's more available energy for us to do what we wanna do and you know to live and be in our full aliveness, our full expression, our full engagement. And how do you think that we go about cultivating a life full of practices where we intentionally pay, where we pay attention to all of this worthwhile information that the body has to offer us? Well, we're in a huge cultural moment right now where we're all asking this question, I think, is like, how do we be more in alignment with nature, with our own inner nature, but also the nature that's all around us? Uh, there's a part of the book called Nature is the Master Regulator. So if someone feels completely disoriented, like if you're listening and you're like, well, yeah, but every time I tune into my body, uh, how do I know what's a craving? Or how do I know what's fear versus intuition? Or how do I know what's intuitive eating versus a craving? Uh, most of the time, nature would be a great resource. It seems so simple. I mean, we also have to start to believe, and I'm sure that you you know this well as a naturopath. It's like we start to have, we have to start to believe that this could be simple. That just because it's simple, it's not easy. But that there's some um, very basic fundamental truths that we just can't ignore. So one of them is that connection is essential for survival. Connection isn't just fluffy. It's not just some emotional woo-woo need. It's actually primary to our survival. Uh, the second is that our biology is important. So our biology actually has tons of information for us. And if we learn to be in rhythm with that biology, which female biology is different than male biology. So a lot of the information that we have out there on nutrition, exercise, biohacking is coming from a male perspective. If we start to learn uh, how to be in relationship to our biology, then we're much more likely to have these reparative experiences and to live in a state where we feel wholeness more of the time. I, I love what you, what you said is that there is a huge difference in the biology that is going on. And ultimately a lot of, and, and you detail this in your book, a lot of the exercise information, the dietary information, the fasting information, the way that we are taught to be healthy is all is all has this male gaze it all has been tested in men and not as extensively in women and so you really you really think that that there is a way that you mentioned that connection is absolutely essential and one of the shifts, one of the paradigm shifts in your book is that we move from me to we, that it's not just about self-help. Talk to us about how you think that connection and community is critical for our survival and our thrival. We can go really deep with this because in this culture, you and I live in the United States, 
uh, their, the inheritance of this culture was immigrants who came to this land, displaced the people that live on the land and had a certain value set about, they were iconoclasts, they were escaping their own kind of trauma and coming here and you know, redoing that trauma. And there's a hyper individualism, right? There's this idea of the rugged individualist, the self-made man. Um, the more that you can do alone, the better that you are. And that is the male gaze as well, because that's, it was part and parcel with this um, way of seeing things that, you know, we want a nuclear family structure and success means moving out on your own, right? Like success means uh, leaving the nest and creating, where in a lot of other cultures, like I lived in Brazil for eight years, people live with their parents until they get their next home. There's not this period of time where people live on their own. And it doesn't mean one is inherently better in every way than another. It's just that when we're talking about mammalian needs, the way that mammals regulate with each other is through proximity and through um, co-regulation and connection. So that's what the social nervous system is. That's what we learned from polyvagal theory. My hope is that we can find a balance because, you know, I come from the yoga world uh, and in that world, my worldview was that I am a microcosm of the macrocosm. So if I do my own work and I am very honest with myself and I clear out my system and I become coherent in my body, my mind, my emotions, my spirituality, then that will have a ripple effect, effect out into the world. But there came a point for me when that wasn't enough, when I thought, well, here I am like a privileged white person and I'm getting better so that I can be happier with my own life. But is that automatically gonna mean that I'm gonna be able to impact those that have less than me in a world that's structurally unjust? Not necessarily. But if we spend all of our time in activism and in a, and which is what my tendency was because I really identified with the victim role. And that's why Jaguar's on the cover of the book because it's about predator prey energy and how we have to have both in our nervous system. Then I may not be well enough to sustain that activism. I may not be well enough to maintain racial stamina or whatever it is that's really important to me. I might not be well enough to stay in the conversation to make the change that I want to make. So my hope is that through understanding our own nervous systems, and the book is primarily written for female, people with female hormones, because hormones, female hormones are bonding hormones that predispose us for certain kinds of nervous system reactions, is that we activate our inner jaguar, which means we learn to have healthy sympathetic energy. We learn to tolerate charge, whether that's conflict or whether that's sex and, and not being able to differentiate between arousal and activation. And in that process, we shore up our life force energy so that we can stand shoulder to shoulder with each other and create the world that we wanna to belong to.